Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another League of Legends video. This time we're going to be do another replay analysis, this time focusing on a Draven gameplay. Um, thank you very much for sending this one in. Just a quick note or standard disclaimer, if you have never seen the series before, this is where I watch gameplay sent in by you guys, the viewers, and I try to provide some coaching or uh, gameplay feedback, whatever you want to call it, uh, to try to help you improve. And so I, you know, with these videos, my intention is to, you know, just help the community understand um, where they have made mistakes. Now, you know, one of the things that I see very frequently is people ask me all the time is, how do you get to Platinum? How do you get to Diamond? And that is a very difficult, or even just how do you get out of Bronze? And that is a very difficult question to answer because there is no, um, there really is no way to kind of quantify that. And certainly, like, I know sometimes people will collect some general tips, things like Ward and, and improve your map awareness, improve your CS, and those are, are good and helpful things. But um, personally, I think a better way is to focus on a specific game. So, um, you know, just in terms of, like, goal setting, this doesn't even relate to League of Legends, but if you just say, if you ha if your goal is, is excessively large, if you just say, you know what, I want to lose 200 pounds, you know, if you're really overweight person you want to let I mean it seems like a very daunting task how do you lose 200 pounds I mean it seems like something you can't do but something that is very possible is to say you know what I'm going to exercise for 30 30 minutes today well that's something that's very very tangible something very practical something that is very easy to do and so in the same sense um, in the game of League of Legends if you want to get to diamond it maybe seems unfeasible but instead if you look at a replay and try to analyze it and and find some individual specific mistakes that can be uh, maybe a lot more tangible a lot easier way to improve and um, so yeah we're gonna go ahead and watch this gameplay if you want to send in your replays feel free to do so at clayplaysreplayanalysis at gmail.com uh, this is actually one that was sent to me the person had uploaded it to YouTube I've also gotten other ones where people upload their videos to Twitch and that is an excellent way to do it. I also will accept replays through um, Baron Replay, OP.GG, Law Replay, although it's been very buggy. Um, but a way like this is actually pretty foolproof. So thank you for this. Now let's go ahead and get into the replay. I'm going to back it up a little bit and um, watch some of the initial laning phase. Now I believe that the, this is a duo queue. I want to say it was somewhere between gold and platinum. Um, so I think this is going to be a pretty good replay. Um, looks like you and I just want to talk a little bit about, I do this in a lot of my videos, uh, the landing matchup. If we've got Draven and Thresh, and we're going to be against a Tristana and a Zyra. Um, just a couple of things that really stand out to me. One is Draven is a very, very strong laning AD carry with a lot of damage. And Tristana is a very weak laning AD carry without, it doesn't really have a lot of damage. Um, and also, um... Thresh versus Zyra. Zyra is very poke heavy, um, whereas Thresh is going to be really good at hard engaging. He's got a lot of utility and a lot of playmaking potential. So if I was coming into this lane, as a, especially as a dual lane, I would be looking to be very aggressive uh, with Draven Thresh. And so kind of keep that in mind. Now it looks like both of you enter lane at about the same time. So um, I would kind of be looking to push just slightly more than you are. The only reason I like to push a lot in a dual lane is because it secures the level 2 faster. I've kind of harped on this a lot, but that's just kind of my thought process every single game. Um, now, there is a little bit of finesse that can happen, especially in a lane like this where you do want to be aggressive. Okay, so just pausing right now. All of the first wave of minions are dead, so these three melee minions are going to be what gets you to uh, your level up. I believe the other lane is about at the same. We've got three melees and three ranged. So you guys are kind of on par to hit it at about the same time. Now with somebody like Thresh, there's a little bit of finesse about it. You, you don't want to just blindly push. If you would have been pushing since when the wave got, the first wave crashed, then the wave would start pushing into their tower. And that's a problem because it doesn't leave Thresh a lot of room um, to engage. So it's fine that you kind of have been soft or slow pushing, but now... I would be really sprinting to clear these three melee minions. And even uh, one thing you can work on with your duo partner is let have Thresh help you. Thresh can auto-attack some of these minions um, to get ready without getting them too low. See, now Tristani, see, they hit level 2 actually before you guys did. So um, there you, you guys almost pretty much hit to it at about the same time. 
But now the wave is kind of pushing in and you have to deal with some of these minions. So it's a difficult for Thresh to go up and be aggressive just because um, you are he's kind of waiting for you to last hit some of these minions. Okay, it looks like at this point things have just kind of stagnated. Zyra's trying to land some poke. And that's kind of what you don't want to do. Um, you can see you guys are at a little bit of a health disadvantage. Looks like Vi's coming in for a gank. Um, this is a really nice opportunity for you guys. I think we saw this already, but um, you don't really want to play the poke game against Zyra. Zyra's going to win, you know, the more drawn out the laning phase goes. Okay, I like that you've come in. Uh, you did a nice job of stepping up. You're letting your front line initiate. We get the crowd control, and we secure the kill. Very nice. Well played. Just a little detail, but I also like that you went to kill that, that Zyra plant. Even if it's only five gold, I think it's worth it. Just a little tidbit about playing in Zyra. But um, overall, you played that gank very nicely, letting your uh, crowd control, you know, the Vi Q, the Thresh Q, you kind of let that land, and then it's your job to follow up, and you did that nicely. So overall, played this part of the laning phase pretty well so far. Okay, so um, one of the feedback tips that I got was to maybe try and cut out parts that were a little bit slower boring. So I've just kind of been watching and, and going to skip out a little bit here. Now, um, mostly just been last hitting. Nothing too much is going on. Zyra's trying to land some poke as best as she can. You know, she's got a lot of damage, so definitely on your mind is to be looking to, to make a play... We don't really want to get into the poke wars with Zyra and Trist, because I don't think that's how you and Thresh are going to win the lane. Um, so here Thresh throws out the hook. He lands it really nice. I like that you instantly um, step up to, to follow up. And I like that you're just trying to kind of scrap this out a little bit. Um, it's probably best to follow up there. The big thing that would happen at the end of that fight is that there were all these minions right here. Uh, especially at this early levels of the game, level 4, keeping track of minion damage is really huge. Um, and I think that you probably would have really dumpstered that trade had there not been minions. But because there were minions, then it kind of evened out. So just something to keep in mind. You definitely didn't commit to it, which was smart. But you got the free flash from Zyra, so um, that's going to be really nice. And I just, in general, I like the fact that you've been trying to follow up on your Thresh. You know, he's been trying to make plays for you. I know you guys are a duo lane, so um, that's really good. Okay, um, it looks kind of like they went Mia. I'm not sure if that's because Vi walked up through the bush. But I think it's fine. Um, one thing you can pos potentially do... I, w I didn't exactly look at where the minion wave is at, but you kind of just started pushing it. At that instance, it's possible that it might be better to freeze it. Freezing versus pushing is always... Um, there are advantages and disadvantages on both sides. I think the biggest thing about freezing is that if you do it at the right time, I think the payoff is a little bit bigger. But I think that pushing is kind of... Well, depending on the champions, I guess I think in this situation I would have preferred the freeze. Um, you know, freezing is where you only last hit at the very, very, you know, especially on somebody like Draven who's got a lot of attack damage, you really want to focus on only last hitting at the very last second as if you were an AP carry, and, you know, maybe face tanking a little bit of minion damage until the next wave gets there so that it can't get into tower. And the big thing that freezing does is that it denies experience and gold from your opponents, whereas if you push, uh, they're, they're pretty much guaranteed to still get the experience. Um, even if they're missing last hits under tower, like Tristana can struggle the last hit under tower, but she's still going to get the experience. But if you freeze, it can really um, leave them behind. You know, there have been I rem you know I've I watch a lot of streams, and I know that this is in bottom lane, but I've I've seen some games where like Boy Boy will be playing top lane, and uh, one of the things he's really good at is when he secures an early lead, he tries to set up a freeze. And so the basic idea is that you um, you never let your opponent get back into it. You're you're never getting get, letting your opponent have an opportunity to uh, to power up. So you take an advantage and then you um, you use your power to kind of set up what would be a disadvantageous situation. Like obviously, if two champions are of equal power level um, in a one v one, 
and you're freezing, you're, it's going to kind of create a bad situation. Um, I'm going to probably come back and talk this in a second. But let me just finish my point. So if, if two champions are of equal power and you're freezing, that means there's going to be more of their minions in the lane. So it's you're going to be at disadvantage in fighting them. But because you have secured an advantage and you probably have an item lead and you, an, an uh, level advantage, you can um, kind of tank that minion aggro and still know that you'll win the all-in. And by setting up the freeze, you can really crush your opponents and keep them down. Whereas if you are pushing, you might deny a little bit of gold, but they're probably still going to get a lot of the experience. So it just kind of depends, and in that situation, especially because um, you don't really have a very good poke combo, you're very all-in, I think freezing might be smarter to give your Thresh a little bit of space. Now, on the other hand, sitting still on a Doran's Blade, that means you don't really have much of a item advantage. So just a little detail, something to keep in mind. But let's go ahead and back up and watch this all-in one more time. Some pretty uh, solid play. So you guys have been mostly playing this lane correctly. Thresh is basically just looking for openings. And it's your job to try... You've basically just been last hitting until the Thresh lands some CC and then you try to follow up on it. And that's exactly how you should be playing this lane. So it looks to me... I might have backed up a little bit too far. You know, again, um, I think the biggest thing to remember against this lane is just how... Yeah, I think I backed up just a little bit too far. I wish I could actually fast forward. Okay, so let's start here. So, another thing to keep in mind, too, with this duo lane is that um, Zyra is a little bit unique in terms of supports because she's very, very high damage. Um, you know, she's somebody who can really hurt more so than a lot of other supports. And so I think that's kind of what happens here is we just get caught by the Zyra root. Okay, so she was kind of fishing on that one. Um, I think what she did, I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt, is that if at least if I were playing Zyra and coaching her is she's watching her minions and when this one gets low, it looks like you're going to kind of step up and last hit it, and then she's throwing out her CC. So you get kind of caught a little bit, but you do bit out the exhaust, but it does chunk you down pretty hard. Those plants really hit. And then Thresh lands the hook. Now, personally, I think that it's okay for you to go for this all in, and here's why. So let's look at the levels. We've got a level 6 Draven. A level 6 Thresh, a level 6 Zyra, but a level 5 Tristana. This level advantage probably negates the HP disadvantage that you are at, so I do think that this is a fight you want to go for. So Thresh goes in, he lands all his crowd control, and um, you get a really nice stand aside. Now, unfortunately, you do kind of get zoned back a little bit by the Zyra knockup, which you played fine. And then we actually end up do going for the Flash... Kind of just playing this one on the edge. I don't necessarily think I saw anything that was like a mistake or anything that could have been done differently. And especially at these early levels. You know, although you were at level 6, which was a huge advantage, you were at an HP disadvantage. So, um, Zyra could basically just get all that chunk down. And that was kind of the main problem there. So, Th Thresh was... You and Thresh were fighting Tristana, but Zyra was fighting you. But because Zyra has so much damage, she could kind of make it work. Not necessarily anything of a mistake right there. Just a quick note, I really like the itemization choice. Um, flat AD on Draven is the best early stat that you can go for. Um, if I were to build Draven, I don't play a lot of Draven just because... He doesn't really fit my style, and I haven't invested the time to learn how to play his mechanics. Um, but I, I understand him conceptually, and so I guess I'll try to weigh in a little bit just from that perspective. But understand and take it with a bit of a grain of salt. I think I did another Draven commentary where I had to say the same thing. I'm not a Draven expert. Um, you know, if you're if you're looking for you know specific tips on Draven play, I'm going to point you to guys like Fabi or Geronimo or I'm a cutie pie. Um, you know, those are really good Draven players. But um, early flat attack damage is the best stat on Draven, and my preferred item choice would be um, 
Infinity Edge, and then maybe Ghost Blade. Reason is that Armor Pen is extremely powerful on Draven because he he has such a huge steroid on his Q and his W. He's got a lot of steroids actually, so um, you know, really taking advantage of those steroids with a lot of flat AD and Armor Pen is a really good way to go. You know, like especially like a Brutalizer is an like extremely good item in the mid game. So if you go something like um, you know Infinity Edge Brutalizer. You know, you could finish the Ghost Blade, you can go Last Whisper, you can maybe grab a Vamp Center somewhere in there, Berserker Grief somewhere in there. Yeah, that's a pretty solid build. Um, I'm curious to see what you go with. You you could definitely go IE Shiv if you wanted. A lot of different directions you could go with it. Alright, so um, now as this landing phase continues, taking a little bit of Zyra Poke, and it looks like we're kind of going for this fight here. And we actually end up getting picked off. So let's go ahead and watch this one more time. I think that the biggest thing here, it, I guess, hmm, I, w I wasn't watching that really specifically looking for what went wrong, but my initial reaction was just that it kind of seemed like you were 1v2ing. You, you really weren't in a position where Thresh could land any lockdown. Or, or kind of set up or initiate, and at the same time you were taking pretty much everything from Zyra and Trist. So we hit the, taking the damage from Trist. Yeah. Okay, so basically that, what happened here is, you're in a, almost a pure 1v2. Um, Tristana, well it started off with Zyra landing the snare, which is, I mean I guess you could, I don't really know how like, I don't think it's very good feedback for me to, as a coach to say, hey, dodge the the snare. I don't, I don't think that's necessarily very helpful. Um, but I think that once you got snared, you chose to stand and fight. And that was maybe where things went a little bit wrong. Thresh's hook was on cooldown. He had just thrown it a little bit earlier. And he wasn't really in a good position to box or flay. But in the meantime, we are taking a lot of plant damage. We took the Zyra knock up. And then Tristana was wailing away. And so... I guess my, you know, if we just look at this death recap, this is a, another, this is a really good um, habit to get into for those of you that don't do this, is read your death recap every time. You know, and just look at how much damage we took here from the Zyra plants. I believe that's just the auto attacks from the Zyra plants. And then also, this is probably Buster Shot, and then, or this might have been the E act, if I'm not exactly sure. But still, a lot of damage from that combo, and it's basically just because um, I think part of the problem was just the positioning, that we were so close to their tower, and because, you know, we didn't have an opportunity for Thresh to initiate the fight, which is really what you want to do. As as an AD carry, you're really at the mercy of your support, and it's it's going to be difficult to really do a lot unless you let your support be the one to start it off. Okay, so this is an example where Thresh lands a really nice hook, and what do you know? You guys get a kill. You know, I think... I'm just gonna watch this one more time. This exactly um, highlights the the I guess the point I was trying to make a little bit earlier is just how important it is as a AD carry to understand that you are very powerful in some in some ways, but also very weak in other ways. You know, you have so much damage as Draven. You probably are one of the scariest champions in the game at this point. Um, but in terms of starting fights, you're not the best. So Thresh lands the hook. We get a nice Q. And you be, you basically almost two shot her between your well I think you only landed one auto attack and then all Thresh's abilities and so it went really well um, and so it's it's kind of just a simple concept but I think that you know the simple fact is that as an AD carry you are um, you are at the I guess the the whim or the back you are dependent on your laning partner. You know, that's why you're in it. It's it's called a dual lane, is because the two of you are in it together, and you need to work together. Now, I think I I can understand. I can anticipate the the counter objection, which is, or the counter argument, which is, you know, that well, what if my support is is bad? What if I'm not somebody who's playing with a duo queue, like this guy, and I cannot trust them? Well, that may be true, but I still think that it is important to understand the limitations of your champion. And that you likely are not going to have a lot of success if you're continually trying to 1v2. Okay, so it looks like we're starting another fight. I think that was a good flash. It probably end up 
saving your life. I also like that you went aggressively there. I think you can probably do this. Yep, nice job. And then Ramus cleans up. So, hmm. A little bit of... I'm just going to watch this this little engage one more time. So this kind of ends up starting a little bit badly. But I like that as Draven, you try to uh, turn it around. You know, that's one of the things about playing Draven is you have so much damage that you can probably... Okay, nice job picking up that kill, and then really nothing you could have done there. You know, especially the the main difference at, on this fight versus the one before where you died, in terms of 1v2ing, is that, you know, the this fight, they had wasted a lot of their cooldowns. You know, understanding the um, the way that cooldowns affects champion's power is really important. You know, just the basic idea that... Uh, you know, basically, if if they have Zyra, if she has cooldowns up, if she has her her snare and her plants and her ultimate, she is way stronger than if she doesn't. It's a pretty simple concept, but still something that is important to understand. Um, and the reason why you were able to get that kill there, and if Framus hadn't shown up, probably could have gotten a double kill, is because um, they didn't have the cooldowns that they needed. Okay, so um, just a quick note, and this is. I might have said this in one of my games before, but one of the things that I notice a lot on streams from, like, high elo guys, one of the main differences between low elo, bronze, and silver versus higher elo is the frequency with which higher elo players will turn a victory into an objective. Some some stuff here I want to talk about. I'm just going to pause and finish my thought. Um, and what I mean by that, and you, one of the things that you said in your email is, is, is exactly about this, is when you, when something goes good for your team, you really want to try and turn that into something else. So, for example, your team had this fight in the river, they picked up some kills, and so, um, immediately they're trying to go toward the dragon pit and take this objective. So you, you turn your advantage into something that will continue to grow that advantage. Um, you know, and it doesn't even necessarily have to be kills. It can be something as simple as you, you forced their dual lane, you got them really low from your poker and all in, you force them to go back. You can, perhaps, if you've got good vision control and a good objective jungler, and you've got good pressure over the map, you can go and do dragon. You know, looking, uh, you know, being, being smart with good vision, good ward coverage, and smart decision making and going to take these objectives is really smart. Now, uh, I realize that this replay is from the, the previous patch, and we're now on 420. And, and I apologize for those of you that want to see more current gameplay, but, you know, these, these basic ideas will still apply regardless of the patch. But it's even more true with the new dragon stacking mechanic. Um, and so I really think that this is important. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is a really smart point. So you guys are doing the dragon, and you see Ramus come in. You can see him here at the top of the screen. I really like that you and Aryan Thresh have stepped out to go and take him out. The worst thing that you can do is for the four of you to continue doing dragon and let Ramus kind of dance around on this and then maybe come in and steal, because a smite steal is 50-50 with, with internet lag and all these things. It just is... It's not very smart. The smartest choice is to go and eliminate him and then finish the objective. The same thing would apply for a late game Baron. You always want to, um, if, if the jungler shows up, you want to go and take out the jungler and then finish the objective. So we pick up the kill. Ramus doesn't have any opportunity. Now you go to finish the dragon and you pick up the dragon. So you guarantee that you secure both. Uh, but on the other hand, if you didn't do that, you can potentially not secure any. So again, this is a perfect example of what I said earlier. If you're if you're letting your team, your your support initiate fights and you're following up, that's a lot better place to be in. Unfortunately, this kind of gets you caught out. Let's watch this one more time. Okay, so um So we picked the dragon. Now, let's think about the decision right here. So the choice that you and your support make is to go and be aggressive and to go fight. Now, for a couple of reasons, I don't know if this is the best choice. First and foremost is, I think you have to assume that the enemy team is flooding to this area. They saw Ramus come in and die. 
And so you kind of know that naturally their team knows that you're here and they know that they're kind of in the area. So you see Tristana. Now right here, when she kind of stays, I might interpret this, especially in hindsight, I don't know if I would think this in the game, but watching this in hindsight, you can think of this as a bait. Now, I don't know if Tristana knows that this is warded or not, but you can kind of think of this as a bait. Now Thresh lands a nice hook. Now unfortunately she gets away. You know, very, very, she has to be at like 2 HP. I, I don't, I can't exactly tell. So it's just a little bit unfortunate that you didn't get the kill. But now all of a sudden we see the Zyra and the Jarvan. And I believe Yasuo comes. So I guess that does confirm that I think Tristana was baiting. It's little tiny tells. Like the fact that she walked into the bush. She had an opportunity. If you look at the minimap, she could have ran to her tower or ran back. She had her W up. But she stood to, she chose to stand and stay and fight. Now she, she got away with like the, you know, the hair on her chinny chin chin, which is a little bit unlucky. But I also think that if you really look at the decision that was made, one, just based on the fact that your team had just taken the dragon, that's going to mean the enemy team is probably heading in that direction. And two, um, if you look at the fact that the Tristana kind of gave, had a little bit of a tell there, you maybe could have interpreted that situation as a bait. You know, and I guess overall, you had, you had gotten some kills in the dragon, you had taken the dragon itself. I'm sorry, you had gotten kills in the river, you had taken the dragon itself, you had killed Ramus. I kind of feel like taking that, that, that invade into their tribrush was just a little bit greedy. And you, if you had made one of the assumptions that their team is going to follow up, and if you had kind of read Tristana's activity as a bait, all of that information together kind of tells me, you know, maybe not the smartest choice. So just a little something to learn from. Um, especially as you get higher up, I think understanding how to read player behavior and looking to, to, read baits is really important. Um, players will be actively looking to bait quite frequently. You know, and especially on a champion like Draven, I think if I'm playing against a Draven, a lot of times you want to, or at least one of the feedbacks I've given is to be aggressive on Draven. Draven is this massive early game bully. Go aggressive, you know, look to fight. Well, I think a lot of times people can playing against a Draven can use that against you to 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 bait you. They know that you're eager to fight. They know that you're so powerful. And so they're going to bait you, um, kind of using that information against you. Okay, unfortunately, it looks like your team kind of got caught out in the river. Not necessarily a lot that could have been done about that. You know, I think you guys have been winning fights. You definitely have powerful champions. I just think that a little bit too much overextending and a little bit... I guess we could just have been a little bit smarter about how we're playing some of these things out. Could have really led to a little bit bigger advantage. Yeah. I'm going to watch this one more time. You know, because you know, we've, we've talked about baits. I think that this is another prime example. I want to watch this again. So one of the things we talked about is to let your support initiate. That's kind of another thing that's missing here. And then, so, just think about this situation. Imagine if you're Tristana. If you see Draven on this health with an Infinity Edge, and you're Tristana and you've got a Static Shiv, I play a lot of Tristana, and I know for a fact that I will get absolutely dumpstered in a 1v1. So when I look at this situation, like, you have to, you have to think, why is Tristana here? Is she making a mistake, or is she trying to bait me? And especially after the bait she did in the Tribrush area, I would really be suspect that, that the Ramus is here. So again, I th kind of think she's using your mentality, which is correct, a little bit against you. And that's kind of where, you know, this is just game sense. There's not really, this is just game sense. You know, it's it's one of those things where, the only way to get good about playing against baits is to get baited a bunch, and then you learn. So I see you kind of wondering what the right item choice is. Interesting, going for Last Whisper. Again, I'm not going to weigh in on the specifics too much, because I don't necessarily think that there is a mistake. 
Let's Whisper second item maybe is a little bit hasty, but I also kind of like it, specifically because there's a Ramus on the other team. Ramus has a lot of armor. I also think that a lifesteal item is essential against Ramus. Ramus um, has a lot of damage return. He's probably maybe going to get a Thornmail too. At least I would get a Thornmail. You've got a Fiora and a Draven. And so um, I think Last Whisper and a lifesteal item are really good. Could also maybe go for a Brutalizer. I just really like the um, flat armor pen on Draven, just because he hits so hard with his Q. Okay, as we kind of have a little bit of a lull, I do want to address some of the questions I haven't pulled up here on um, another screen. I guess I don't want to miss anything. Good stand aside. So uh, one was, do you have any tips about creating picks so we can take objectives easier? Uh, I'm just going to pause and address this. So creating picks, especially in the mid-game, is all about vision. Vision is... Um, what leads to creating picks, and especially with champions like Ari, Thresh, Fiora, Vi, you have a really good team for creating picks, and so the best way to get picks is to set up really good vision control. And so, if I were you, and I was playing on this team, I would consider having a pink ward out on the map that's yours, and whether you're setting that, you know, you can put it in pretty much any bush, it doesn't really matter. Um, but if you're sitting in a, a pink warded bush and you have these teammates, your team is really scary. So, you know, it could be in this bush, it could be in this bush down here, um, same thing on the other side of the map. Doesn't necessarily matter where. Just, um, controlling vision, and by that I mean you, you have vision of the enemy team and you're denying vision from them, is the best way to set up picks. Second question, do you have any tips to get inhibitors and inhibitor towers? They have a lot of wave clear and can defend pretty well. Um, some of these questions are maybe a little more late game, but the best way to deal with that is to. Oh, I'm gonna get back to those questions in a little bit and, and quick analyze this fight. Okay, so I really like that decision right there to go for the Tristana. Good job with the lantern. I think you played this fight really well. Um, fortunately, the Vi went down. And then definitely, yeah, I think we can make something happen on this Yasuo. Ooh, Ramus didn't quite get the taunt off. He would have probably been dead had he. Watch this fight one more time. Um, can I slow this down? I don't think so. Well, um, so just from what I saw, I, I like I saw that you were auto attacking the Ramus, and then you immediately go after the. So I'm just gonna pause right here. So you start out attacking the Ramus, and then you go for the Tristana. Now, this is a little bit risky, but I think it pays off. I think that this is also a concept that is a little bit difficult, but the overall I'm just going to call it target switching. Target switching is essential on an AD carry. And with Ramus, you got to understand that he he just used his taunt, I think, and all his everything. He's, he, he doesn't have anything going for him. And also because you see the Vi ulting, I think that it's smart for you to target switch onto the Tristana because you can basically instantly kill her, which is what happens. And part of this is because you're playing Draven. Draven can get away with acting a little bit like an assassin just because he has so much burst damage. You know, with a, with his Q and a crit, I mean, his burst damage is obscene. But also realize that there are going to be times where that decision is going to cost you your life. So... I mean, the reality is that it's, you know, League of Legends is such a fluid game where you are constantly evaluating and, and making decisions. It, it It's impossible. You know, there are a lot of times where I would suggest someone to not do what you just did. You know, the, the common advice is to auto-attack the, the closest target, auto-attack the safest target. Well, in that case, you didn't, and I think it was the right call. So you just kind of have to use the information you've been given, evaluate it on a case-by-case -case basis, that was really well played. I like that you, um, you basically were just trying to bait him into your team. I think you played that really well. You know, you could, you, you used your W to give yourself just enough time to get into this bush, and then you used your E only when it was advantageous to set up the R and the Thresh to follow up. I think that was a really smart choice. I think other, some other players might have panicked and thrown the E out right away. Well, you're looking to create an opportunity and make a play, and that's really, I think, an important takeaway, an important thing to understand, is that in order to win games, sometimes you have to make plays. 
Good stand aside. Negate that. Holy smokes. And he wants you. Yeah, see, he already has a thorn mail, so I can see why you're going for the last whisper. I think you've made a lot of smart itemization choices. And just a lot of nice plays overall. It's just a very small thing, but um, I saw in chat, after that play happened, you said, gee, good job. It's just a very little thing, a very minor detail, but stuff like that is is really important. Um, one of the things I've talked before on my channel, but not so much in some of these series, is just the importance of of morale, the, the human element. You know, League of Legends is, is a game where five human beings are interacting, and that, the psychology thing, the, the team play is almost as important as any of in anything else. The, the decision-making, the mechanics, uh, having a team that have, has five players that are in good spirits, that believe that win one another, you know, these are, it, it's almost a joke just because people's experience has been so bad. Well, I think that if you are really taking active steps to create good team morale, that can be really powerful. And so just a little thing like saying good job when your allies make a good play can be really impactful. So I like that. I like that a lot, and I want to encourage that to everyone. All right, so um, I hope that this video comes together well. I've kind of been starting and stopping and skipping, and hope it all works out. But um, anyways, as we get back into things here, advise toast. Man, look at that. You almost took 50% of that HP with one crit. Not a lot, really, that could be done there. It just wasn't really... don't exactly know what the Vi was doing. Just a little minor note. This didn't really relate to your play, because you're playing AD carry, and um, you kind of are reliant on your team initiating fights well. But one of the things that I always tend to... Uh, the best way to gauge aggression is to also coincide it with vision. So the fact that you only had one, basically two wards, and that a lot of the map was pretty blank, is a tell for me to be cautious. On the other hand, if you have a lot of vision, if you have vision, you know, in by the red buff or their wraiths, I guess chickens now or their wolves or their blue buff, and you can see where the enemy champions are. That is the best way to know how aggressive you should be. So for that Vi to go in where you didn't have a lot of vision, well, it got her pretty much screwed because, you know, she engaged a fight that all of a sudden all these people shot out of nowhere. You know, you really want to be focusing on coinciding the level of vision you have with the level of aggression you have. If you don't have vision, you can't be aggressive. If you have vision, then you can be aggressive. Also, um, it's kind of important to note that Fiora has committed pretty hard to split pushing. Um, and it's important to know what the response is to playing with a split pusher. So, uh, split pushers, the whole idea is there, there is that you're creating a mismatch. You're, you're, you're creating a numbers advantage across the map. You know, because you're strong and you're powerful, oh, this already is in trouble. But because you're strong and you're powerful, yeah, you kind of got baited a little bit there. But to finish my point on the split pushing, you know, you want to... There are basically three options you have with split pushing. Is if they send one person to go deal with the split pusher, hopefully the split pusher wins the 1v1 and you guys go even in the 4v4 meaning you you fight and it's close, or you don't fight at all and you just kind of stallmate. If they send two people, that means that it's a 3v4 and you guys should win the 3v4. If they send nobody, then you make sure that you don't get dove in the 4v5 and you let the split pusher take objectives. Those are kind of the three options. Um, and that time, 
you kind of weren't really synced very well. So it meant that the Fjord was pushed up, but she got collapsed on, and there really wasn't uh, a group of four that you guys were in to really make something else happen across the map. Then, um, after that, if we kind of step this back a little bit, to me it just kind of looks a little bit like you guys were kind of overextending when you really didn't need to, if that makes any sense. Apologize, my, my video quality just plummeted for some reason. So, I mean, just kind of looking at the scenario and the situation, there's only two of you here. There's only two... It's it's you and, and Ari. Ari missed her charm. So at this point, I kind of feel like if I were in your shoes, I mean, I don't really know what good things will come out of this situation. Doesn't really seem like much good will happen. So at this point, I kind of feel like being up this far without your allies, it just seems very scary, you know. Their team has a lot of ways they can get to you. Ramus, Jarvan, Yasuo have quite a bit of mobility. It just seems like this is very risky. Okay, sorry about that, guys. So now the Ari gets engaged on, but unfortunately, Ari is a highly mobile champion and you ne aren't necessarily. And you pretty much just get totally left for dead there. Yeah, I guess I, I kind of feel like that was a situation where we maybe were a little bit overextended. Hmm. Because I, I, I guess, honestly, I really think that the main problem with that last engage was just that the Fiora and the Ari were kind of overextending, and then you kind of got caught into it. But I think that it's very important when we are doing a series like this, and when you are trying to wa hopefully watch this video and get some information that you can help you improve, you know, focusing on the mistakes of others is never going to help you. But if you focus on what you could have done better, that is something that will guaranteed help you out. So just kind of keep that in mind. Okay, so now moving forward to the next team fight. Um, Overall, this has been played very nicely. Nice that you guys got a couple of picks. One thing I want to note is just how much better your vision is. You know, you I think you had a couple wards on this side of the map. You've got four or five wards on the left side of the map. You know, again, vision is the best way to create picks. And uh, you guys had made a nice play there on the, the Jarvan and the Ramus. Okay, I'm going to pick it up here quickly. Uh, just a very minor thing, but I like that you are doing a little bit of shot calling here in the chat section. Um, and before we get into this next fight, I want to touch on this. Is I think chat is something that is so divisive in League of Legends. It's something that causes so many problems. And if you are somebody that has problems with chat, if, if you are in a place where you frequently find that you um, leave a game and you just feel so bad about the community and you like things were so toxic and it was just became a huge mess and huge problem i really highly want to encourage you to consider using the mute button more aggressively um if if okay let me let me lay it out this way you cannot control what your what the other people in your game will say to you but you can control whether or not you read it and you also can control how you let what they say to you affects your gameplay and so, you know, obviously the easiest solution would be just be to say, well, why doesn't everybody just get along and, and not say mean things and be toxic? Well, that's never going to happen. You cannot fix toxicity. I don't think there's anything that can. It says this is like a human problem. But you can control whether you or not you allow somebody else's toxicity to affect your gameplay. That is something that you can control. So um, using the chat either by muting or using it to... F encourage objective gameplay, you know, dr so just saying dragon is soon, come, you know, this is good, this is getting your team to focus on an objective, um, which is really, really, that's exactly what you want the chat to be. Um, just another, I said this before, but um, your aggression level should always match the level of vision you have, and I, 
You guys have good vision on the map. You've got some wards around the red buff and their blue buff. Now Jarvan engages. Um, this is you do a really nice job of kiting back. Some really excellent mechanics here of catching your axes while kiting backwards. Maybe you could have saved your ultimate a little bit better to follow up on this Vi. I don't know if you needed the ult to kill the Jarvan. But overall, that was really nice. I think you guys did a lot of nice things there. And now, I really like the fact that you have are stepping up to try to pressure this tower. You know, I said this a little bit earlier, but it's really important to try and turn a, a little victory into an objective. Now again, you know, that's... You don't want to overstay, you don't want to... You know, if you're going to go take Dragon, that's probably even better because it's a little bit safer. I really like the fact that Thresh warded that bush. You always want to ward the entrance. This is just a little thing about warding is it's always better and smarter to ward the entrance path that somebody will have to take to get to you rather than just warding your immediate surroundings because it gives you more time to um, see where they're coming from. And the more time you have, the more uh, the better things you can make with those the information presented to you. Overall, it's just going to ha let you have a lot more success. Okay, I like the Bloodthirster here. I've always been somebody who has been a fan of just stacking an obscene amount of flat attack damage on Draven and kind of skimming a little bit on attack speed. Maybe it's because I have, have not mastered Draven's mechanics. But I've always kind of felt that, especially for lower level players, and not to say that this applies to you, I think your Draven mechanics have been pretty solid. But if, if you, you know, Draven just hits so hard with his Qs, and if you can get those Devil Axes spinning, and you don't have a lot of attack speed, you're still going to do a ton of damage. And if that in turn makes it easier for you to catch Axes, then I think it's totally worth it. You know, if you're going to play Draven successfully, you have to catch Axes, it's as simple as that. So if you can itemize in a way that will maximize that damage and make it easier to catch them, then I think it makes a lot of sense. You know, I think I've always kind of thought that attack speed is a skill stat on Draven, more so than other ADs. Alright, so now you guys are um, kind of got a little bit of a 4-1 split push going. I talked about this earlier, but remember our scenarios. It looks to me like they have sent a bunch of people top. Now, hmm, I personally think that your team could be playing this a little bit better. Inst I think Vi goes up to help, but I think instead you guys should be focusing on this little Tristana and this mid-tower. Um, perhaps even maybe going for a little bit of a dive? I don't know. I guess it kind of works out, trading one for one, but I still, um, I kind of would have, instead of kind of splitting your 4-1 up into a 3-2, you know, if they send a bunch of people top, that should, in theory, leave the mid-tower totally free and open for you guys to take. Okay, so I'm going to pick it up here. Um, also, just quickly, feel free, guys, to leave me some feedback on whether or not this kind of... Um, I'm focusing on the highlights a little bit more than just talking through the whole gameplay, whether or not you think that is a good choice, if it's something that makes it a little bit easier to digest as the watcher, uh, feel free to let me know. So, a couple of thoughts here. The situation is that the enemy team has Baron, and it's a 4v5. They kind of snuck it, and they killed the Fiora who checked. Now they're sieging this tower. Again, this is a 4v5. Um, I would kind of give up this tower. Now Vi goes in, and she just kind of walks right back out. Like, I don't really understand why the enemy team didn't just hop all over that and blow her up. Because I think that was a mistake. Now, unfortunately, the CC is just landing on Ramus, who's exactly what I want. But then Ari here makes a really nice play, and she lands a really nice combo on the Jarvan. Vi follows up, and we get the kill. So now we're at a 4v4. But then two things happen here that aren't so good. Is First of all, this Yasuo Windwall comes up and really makes life difficult for you as the Draven. The Vi gets totally melted, and Ari's kind of waiting in the wings. I think she still has her ult, but... All of a sudden, um, the, your, the front line, the Vi and the Thresh just got totally melted. And I don't think there was anything you really could have done about it in that situation. Really nice stand aside there. And you probably did need to use your heal. Um, and just kind of run all the way home. 
Now, at this point, I really like that you choose to rush your home guards. Um, home guards in a situation like this are really important. This game is definitely still in the balance, and uh, I think it definitely can be won. Okay, it looks like the Fiora engages, and, uh, you know, we're just here to clean up. That's perfect. I think that um, you played this last couple of minutes really, really well. So now, they just got the inhib, but I think we managed to get an ace? I'm not exactly sure if any of them are still up. So it's two, two of you are still alive, and I think we just aced them. So at this point, it's really, I think so, I think it's really important that we try and take something. And... If I were you, I would be really trying to encourage the Fioria. I'm sorry, not the Fiora, the um, Fioria, there's no such thing. The Ari to join with you, and I would really like to see the two of you... Well, yeah, I guess maybe it wasn't an ace. Perhaps I'm reading the situation wrong, but I would have really liked for the two of you to go and try and take something. But instead, we're just kind of cleaning up the map. I... I don't know, I'm not going to be too firm on this one. I don't necessarily think you've made a mistake by coming to collect red buff. But I do think that this maybe would be, have been an opportunity to try and do something. Basically, whatever you can do to try and... Uh, anytime you get a bunch of kills, whatever you can do to try to follow up on it, to secure some objectives is really, really good. And if, 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 if only that means is that you're going to push out a couple of super wave minions for free, then maybe that's worth it. You know, just because super waves... Super minions are so brutal. Okay, the Vi got chunked out really hard. She needs to go heal. Just a quick comment. Um, I really think you've done a nice job of itemizing really well this game. Um... You know, you got the second item, Last Whisper, third item, Bloodthirster, is perfect against Ramus, who's rushing Thornmail. Those are the two items you absolutely need, is Last Whisper and Bloodthirster. You need the additional lifesteal to deal with the um, the crazy amount of self-damage, or you know, you're going to be damaging yourself by auto-attacking him, and you have to auto-attack him. And then Last Whisper is absolutely necessary because he's got so much armor, so... Fortunately, if I got caught out again, um, you know, at this stage of the game... It really is a team game, and unfortunately, you guys just haven't really been able to make the plays that you need to make. Nice ultimate there. That was a really nice job of following up on the Fiora ult with your ult. The Fiora just did so much work right there. Alright, so I think we're going to get a full ace off of this. I, Ramus might get away, but you know, this is really what I... Yeah, I, I really like the immediate pings towards top. Whatever you can do to take something. Have, have somebody... I think Ari should go back. And I think... Nah, I think you guys are making the... Is, pretty smart call here. Going to push top and take something is definitely, I think, the smart decision. Now, unfortunately, though, we don't have a base, so... And Ramus is still up, and he probably could at least keep you around long enough for chain CC. So going to take that turret probably is impossible. At this stage of the game, with these with this Nexus turrets down and the inhibitor down, it's really hard to make a play until the inhibitor at least responds. And so, yeah, I think I think you guys have definitely shown that you can win this game. You 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 can win fights, um, but it's just pretty crucially important that. You get the right engages, and that you're able to do what you can to take out Ramus. You know, um, Ramus and Jarvan are going to be diving towards you. There's just nothing that can be done about that. Yes, yeah, so probably will try to come with them, but if you can do whatever you can to try and stay alive as long as possible, um, you know, using your QSS to negate the the taunt, um, using your E to stand aside maybe Jarvan or Yasuo. Whatever you can do to try to stay alive and deal as much damage as you can in these teamfights is really your goal. It's, you know, playing Aided Carry is pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. But um, in that simplicity, that can be pretty complicated because, you know, it's not always quite so simple. The, the, the basic premise is very simple, but executing it sometimes can get a little bit complex. Alright, so your inhibitor has respawned. Now, if, if you guys make a play and can win a big fight, you know, now we're looking at ending the game, so um, understand that the next team fight may end up deciding it. 
I really think that it's important to try and secure as much vision as you possibly can at this stage, so I like the fact that you placed down a ward. You really don't have any more inventory spots, but... Whatever uh, you guys can do to secure a lot of vision, especially in their jungle, is going to be really powerful. Okay, so... I'm going to talk a little bit about this decision right here. Ramus can only taunt one person. We can go for their backline easily. I think that's actually pretty smart. Uh, one of the things you've done pretty consistently this game is to try and ignore the Ramus. You know, especially here, you're kind of bypassing their front line and going straight towards their back line. Now, unfortunately, that kind of gets you caught out in a little bit of trouble. And I want to kind of talk about this decision and how it ends up playing out. Hmm, this looked like, unfortunately, Fiora got caught. Watch this one more time. So, in my mind, when I think about this basic concept of kind of letting Ramus be this, you know, he's got so much tank stats, but he doesn't really do that much damage. And he doesn't really have any AOE CC, so you can, I understand what you're saying, that you can kind of ignore him. Um, but I also think that that is a little bit risky. I think that's kind of what ends up playing out here. So it kind of this fight kind of starts out with Vi getting caught out a little bit. She gets taunted. Now, yeah, okay. So it looks like you're ulting and you're you're doing your best to try and and I could see you you running trying to flank this side of the Zyra ult, ignoring their frontliners here. I think this is Jarvan and um, yeah, this is definitely Jarvan and Ramus and going a little bit more for their backline. Now, unfortunately, that means targeting their support. Which, I think we end up getting the kill, but I can't help but wonder if maybe I had gotten those auto attacks off on the Yasuo, maybe that would have gone a little bit better. But the Zyra is, I don't know if I said Fiora Zyra, but I don't know, I guess I feel like that strategy is a little bit riskier because um, it requires that it you actually take out their backline. Because if you, if you go for the backline... If if you skip the Ramus, go for the backline, and you don't get them very quickly, it's gonna be a problem, and you're gonna get like kind of sandwiched, which is kind of what ends what ends up happening. So as this game wraps up, um, I actually want to take a little bit of time and talk about some of the specific questions that you had. I apologize, I maybe should have answered some of them sooner. Okay, so um. So one of the things you talk about is, you know, you had that mid-game advantage, you had pushed up towards their base, but weren't really able to break in and end the game. Um, and so I think one of the core questions that you had is, do you have any tips to get the inhibitor or to get inhib towers? What if they have a lot of wave clear and defend pretty well? That's kind of what happened. Um, I'm going to just kind of back up here and just kind of see what the how the map lays out. You know, So if we just kind of pause it and look at the mini-map right here, you guys do kind of have a bit of a turret advantage. Um, and definitely the best way to answer that question is, is you need to pull them out of their base. And I think the best way to do that is with a Baron. And I, I think one of the things that your team could have done a better job of doing is controlling the vision around Baron. Maybe if you had bought a pink ward and kind of put it in one of these bushes or, or just even encouraged your duo partner Thresh to really do a good job of warding up the Baron. Uh, I know at some point in this game, their new team had snuck a Baron. I don't know if I showed that or I had skipped it, but they kind of just snuck it and nobody really saw because we didn't have good enough vision. You know, the best way to pull a turtling team out of their base is to force objectives, especially now in the new season with the stacking Dragon buffs. Um, there are a lot of ways with Dragon and Baron to, to pull them out of the base and force them to come and fight you. And if you can control vision leading up to that objective and deny vision at that objective, you can really put your team in a good position. As I said earlier, your team is really good at creating picks, and so uh, the best way to do that is with vision. Okay, another question.
This is an interesting one. Uh, when is it better to take the tower as soon as possible and in the laning phase? Or when is it better to prolong the laning phase and not take the tower? So I talked a little bit about this with the freezing versus the pushing. Um, so there are two main strategies with this. In, one is that you're going you're gonna to push up and take the tower fast and then roam. So if you are pushing them under their tower, hopefully they're going to miss CS, and you're going to take the tower fast, so you guys have more map control and map pressure. Uh, but one thing that you are doing with that strategy is you are making sure that they get all of the experience, and they at least have an opportunity to get a lot of the gold. Um, but that does give you better map pressure, and so maybe you can go and take a dragon, or maybe go mid lane and take a turret. But I also think that if you freeze... And, and you try to zone, well, first and foremost, you need to probably have an item advantage or at least a champion advantage where you can win it all in. And um, I think that the Tristana was playing very passively and the Zyra was trying to poke down a lot. So there weren't a lot of clear opportunities, at least in my mind, from the laning phase where you could really set up a good zone. I know there was one I had talked about. I guess you kind of just need to evaluate it case by case. If you If you zone then you can really keep them shut down. You can deny a lot of experience and gold, and they just kind of are in this place where they're really stuck. They probably got to do jungle camps, which takes stuff away from their jungler. But it's also a little bit riskier because they could be roaming and making plays across the map. You don't have as much map pressure because you're kind of stuck by your own tower. I think that with this, you kind of need to evaluate it, and specifically with Draven... I kind of like freezing a little bit better just because he's so strong in some of these skirmishes where you can probably win. Okay, uh, specifically for Thresh, when do you want to start Relic Shield, Dorn Shield, and Ancient Coin? This is actually an interesting question. I think specifically with Thresh, my personal opinion is I'm not a big fan of the Relic Shield. And let me explain why. So, first and foremost, I think that Face of the Mountain is a pretty good item on Thresh. It gets, makes him tanky. It gives some cooldown reduction, and it gives you the shield. I think Face of the Mountain is fine. But I think that Relic Shield isn't my favorite, and there's one reason. This is less true when you're duoing, but in solo queue, Relic Shield on Thresh is something that always makes me squirm if I'm AD carry. Because Thresh is not melee, he doesn't get the execute bonus, you always have to trust him a little bit to get the last hit. And especially with the passive on his E, where the soul damage isn't always there, it like ramps up based on the amount of time he spends not auto-attacking. Um, I guess I don't really like Relic Shield on Thresh. I really like Coin because I think that sh the Shirelias, what's it called? Uh, Talisman. Talisman of Ascension is really good on Thresh. Thresh has a ton of utility and Talisman just gives him even more. And then I think that starting Ruby Crystal and Rushing Sightstone is also a good choice, especially if you're going to fight a lot. Um, the HP from R Ruby Crystal is, is good. So... I guess those are my thoughts. I would prefer coin or, uh, you know, you can even start start coin and then rush sightstone, or you can start ruby crystal, pick up a coin, and then grow sightstone. That's my preference, but that's mostly for solo queue. I think in a dual lane, relic shield is fine. But anyways, those are the questions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know your thoughts. I tried a little bit different formatting here with the kind of trying to pick out the highlights. Hopefully that resulted in a little bit of a shorter video. Um, but I hope you guys enjoy this. Let me know your thoughts down below. Feel free to send your replays to clayplaysreplayanalysis at gmail.com, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.